Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're going to be looking into how to physically shoot uh, in our little prediction game here. I thought it'd be very interesting to see how it'll work out with uh, physical bullets, so we can actually hit each other, push each other, deal damage to each other, and so on. I think that would be rather interesting, so I think let's uh, get started with that. So let me start off by making a new script, and let's call this our player shooter, for example. Now that we're in the script, let's try and figure out what it is exactly that we need. Uh, so first of all, the player shooter of course needs to be a predicted identity because we need to be able to shoot and obviously that needs to take input and state. So let's go ahead and just name it already what we're going to be naming them. So dot input and player shoot dot state. And now let's go ahead, my copilot is going nuts here. Now let's go ahead and make a public struct for input. That'll be I predict predicted in data like so. And then we have the public struct for the state, which will be I predict the data of type state. Like so. Now let's just go ahead and add this pose in here. Suppose pattern as we do need. Something like that. And I think that should work well. And don't mind this pose, it's something we'll get into a bit later again. Uh, so let's try and think about what it is exactly what we need. Start by implementing the simulate, which we will need in here. Um, and essentially now let's start with the input, right? So let's say that we need a public pool for shoot. And then let's also try and make a timer. Timer timing functionality is something that seems to confuse some people, and it's actually very easy. Let's just make a public float, and let's do a uh, time to can shoot, for example. And we can also just make a bool in here that can be can shoot. And we can actually make this equals to if time to can shoot is less than or equal to zero. Uh, something like that could work. So I hope this makes sense. This is essentially just a pointer checking if the time is less than zero. If the time is less than zero, this will be true, otherwise false, just so we can use that. So in this case, we can just do if state dot can shoot. Well, then in here we can shoot. So here we handle our shooting. Right, so let's go for that. And now otherwise, what we also need is if we cannot shoot, we need to count it down. So we can do state dot time to can shoot minus equals to the delta. So this is a very, very important point. You guys might be used to doing time the delta time in a lot of places. And essentially with prediction, everywhere where you would do time the delta time or time that fixed delta time or something like that, you need to use the delta that's in here. And this delta is essentially just the, um, the tick delta. It's just very important to, to use that instead because it you know need to work at various tick rates and when catching up and stuff like that. There's a lot of intricacies with this, so that's why it's important that you use the delta that is given to you. All right, cool. So now that we have this, we will essentially have a shot timer. And so let's start by saying that we only want to be able to shoot once a second. So let's do state dot time to can shoot. And let's just set that equal to one. This now means that it'll take one second before we can shoot again, right? So cause can shoot will be false because can time to can shoot will be above one again. All right, cool. And now here we essentially just handle the rest of the shooting. All right, so let's start by handling the actual input. So let's do um i think let's do the update input method that i showed you guys last time and let's update the input based on the input dot shoot and then it's the or equals to unity engine dot input dot get key down and that'll just be key code dot mouse zero for example that's the left mouse button so now this will become true when i hit the left mouse button all right cool so if we're not trying to log here just to try and see shooting Let's try just logging that and let's go and give that a try. And of course, I forgot to add the script. So let's, of course, remember to do that. Player shooter like that. All right, cool. So now you can see it's shooting all the time, which is obviously because I completely forgot to use the goddamn input. If can shoot and we're intending to shoot, that's what I meant to do. There we go. That should be fine. And actually, we don't need the else here either. I just realized it's fine just always counting down because it just gets set to one anyway. So it doesn't matter if it goes to minus a billion. However, you know, for an optimization thing now, um, we can just do if state dot cannot shoot, then we count down. The reason for that is just because with prediction, we're actually only sending the difference. So changing something constantly for no reason means that we're constantly sending some kind of difference. Whereas when it doesn't change, there's no difference. That's called delta compression in case you're interested. Okay, so now that we're here, you can see when I click with the mouse, now it's a shooting. And when I keep clicking with the mouse, you can see it keeps shooting, but I can only shoot once a second, no matter how much I spam it. All right, cool. So that's working very well. Now let's get to actually spawning our object. So let's start making whatever that it is that we want to actually spawn. I think it'd be kind of fun if we're just shooting, since we're little circles, I think let's shoot little cubes. So let's call this a projectile. And let's just give it a body of a cube. So let's do cube. 
and this will be the, the visuals. Um, and let's just make this way smaller. So let's make it like 0 0.3, something like that. Let's put it at 0, 0, and maybe just up a little bit so we can actually see it. So here's our little cube. Let's add a box collider back onto it, just so we have that correctly as well. And well, I guess I need the gizmos for this, but this was 0 0.3, I think. 3, 3. There we go. That looks good. Let's add the predicted... Um, do we want it to be a rigid body? Oh, I don't see why not. So let's make it a predicted rigid body. So now it actually has physics on the object too. Uh, and let's see here. The predicted transform, of course, takes the visuals. We need to remove the visuals box collider here, which works fine like that. And that should pretty much be it. I think that should... I think that should handle it. I don't see why not. Uh, and now let's try and shoot it. So now let's, in our player shoot script, let's just make a serialized field, private, and let's do with a predicted rigid body to the projectile prefab. So now we're just going to be spawning it as a predicted rigid body, which should be fine for our case. So now when we're actually handling the shooting, here's where things go a little bit different from normal networking. You can't just go through instantiate or through destroy. You need to go through what is essentially called the hierarchy. So what we can take is with the prediction manager, and then we grab the hierarchy, and then we can do create. I know this is a little bit different. It might be confusing. Um, and then we need to actually create the game object. So let's do dot game object. I don't know why it made a new line. So we feed the game object to create. And then as you can see here, it can also take an owner, which in our case doesn't really matter much. It's not going to make a difference, but we also need to feed it a position and rotation in this case, which that actually matters. So let's start by actually calculating where do we want to shoot. So I think we want to shoot in the direction of the mouse. And this is where things become a little bit interesting because of course you can predict some kind of rotation around the player with a gun or with a mouse or whatever. But I really think when it comes to rotational stuff, it's very finicky. What, what you have to be aware of is when working with prediction, uh, obviously that can be made mistakes and then you will be set essentially back to the correct position instead of being in the mistaken position, right? Same things can go for the rotation or anything else that can technically be calculated wrong. It'll typically come in the form of uh, collisions that things will be off. Um, so that's why making rotations, especially in like first person game stuff like that predicted, will typically feel really bad because if there's a misprediction, all of a sudden your camera will sort of jitter back to the correct position and that doesn't feel good. So I think instead what we do, we essentially just send the intended shoot direction. So I think let's do something like, yeah, I think vector 2 or vector 3, whatever. I guess let's do a vector 3. Yeah, we can do a vector 2 direction, actually. That's fine. Um, yeah, that's fine. So I think let's send the direction through the input. I'm, I'm really just winging this as well as you here. And then in the get final input, yeah, we only really need this whenever the server actually ticks, which is where it's actually going to use it. We can calculate the direction. Uh, so we could do input dot direction. Uh, okay, so first we need to make the ray, which I'm just going to get lazier. Use camera dot main. And we're going to screen, use screen point to ray with the unity, what's called unity engine dot input dot mouse position. This will give us essentially the ray cast from, you know, towards essentially in the direction from the screen to where our mouse on is on the screen. And then from there, we can calculate the T that we need to calculate where that hits the height of the player. Um, so in this case, that would be transform to position dot Y minus ray dot origin dot Y divided by ray dot direction dot Y. I think that should give us the needed step. And then from there, our hit points will be, I guess this is a vector three. Uh, our hit point will be ray origin plus ray direction times the step. I think that should give essentially where we hit on the plane. Uh, and then from there, we should be able to just calculate the direction by essentially doing transform dot position minus the hit point. Uh, and we can normalize this, but there's actually a safer way to handle normalizing input. I could have mentioned this earlier, but I'm deciding to mention it now. And that's essentially called sanitize input. Sanitizing input is something that everybody runs. So it's essentially a safety measure to make sure that the client cannot send bad input code. So for, for example, here we can just do input dot direction dot normalize. And that will essentially normalize our directional input. So now regardless of what they send here, it'll always be normalized. 
even if they try to cheat it locally, everyone else will have normalized the input and they won't be able to cheat it. All right, cool. So I think that should essentially give us the direction. Now we need to go back up here and we need to actually calculate where we spawn it. So I guess let's do a var spawn point, make a new vector three. Um, and this should be our transform dot position dot x plus the, this would be the input dot direction dot x. And here we'll do, let's just do 0.5 because that's the height of the middle of the player or whatever. Transform dot position dot set plus input dot direction dot y. Um, and actually I just realized, let's not make this 0 0.5, let's make this transform dot position dot y. Just for cleanliness. And then we can give it the spawn point here. And we can actually also give it, let's just give it quaternion dot identity for now as a rotation. Uh, and let's try and go have, have a look and see if this works at all. So also, uh, I've gone ahead and I've made the projectile into a prefab. Uh, and automatically it should have been added to the predicted prefabs, but it's always good to check and make sure. And under the player, uh, as you can see, I've fed it the projectile prefab in the player shooter. Okay, yeah, of course, I'm so silly here. The, the issue is we're obviously ref making a vector 3 into a vector 2, which makes it use the Y. That's just because I'm silly here. Um, the direction in this case, we, we can actually just make it a vector 3. That should pretty much do it. And then up here, of course, we just use the set. And I think that should pretty much do the trick. And there we go. Yeah, now, so as you can see, it spawns it in the side where we click. So you can see here now, if you look at both screens at the same time. You can see when I, oops, I forgot to move them. There we go. See now when I click, it spawns them on both sides. And as you can see, they also can interact with the other player. So now let's actually make them add some force, maybe make the projectiles add some knockback. And that should be nice and quick to do. So let's start by actually return the created object, I guess, equals two. And this comes out essentially as a predicted object ID. And predicted object ID, first of all, this is nullable. So we have to check that it actually has a value. So has value. If it doesn't have a value, it means we essentially fail to create the bullet and we can return. Now, if it does have a value, we can do created object dot value dot. And then let's have a look at what's available to us here, right? That's, for example, the try get component, which is probably what we want to use here. So if we do try get component, we can feed it the prediction manager and we can do out and then we need to give it the predicted rigid body, which is what we want in this case. And then we can just say, call that the rigid body. And of course, since this is a try get component, let's make an if statement. Let's again return, uh, mind you, if it did not get the component uh, and let's just call it RB just so it stops yelling at us. And now we can actually add some force to this. And given, you know, we already have the direction right here, that should luckily be nice and easy. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's do RB dot add force. And let's do it in a new vector three. Actually, I guess let's just make this let's do a var real direction with that. Let's feed it there and let's also just feed it here. Uh, and let's give it some kind of shoot force. So let's do a serialize field, private, float, shoot, force. Let's do something like five. Um, and let's add that down here where we add the force. So we will take the real direction times it with shoot force and we'll make it an impulse like so. And it should really be that easy. Now we should have added force to the projectile as well after spawning it playing here. And as you can see now, when we click, we shoot this little box, I guess uh, right now it's very slow shooting. So let's increase the shooting force quite a bit. Let's do like 20, just way up it. Whoops, and do something like that. Yeah, there you go. Now you can see we're really shooting them out here. Can actually hit hit him. And we can make it also easily do some damage or things like that on collision. So that should all work pretty fine. Whoa. This is very satisfying. Um, okay, yeah, so now we have the shooting working. Let's uh let's move into actually having it do something. Uh so let's maybe have let's make a projectile script. So let me go into scripts, let me make a projectile script. And let's just have it do some damage. So let's also make this one a predicted identity. That way we can also destroy it when it actually does some damage. And this one obviously doesn't take any input. So this one will just take projectile.state. And then we'll just build a state for it. So let's do a public struct state. That'll be of I predicted data of type state. And of course it'll have to dispose as always. Uh, and let's pretty much leave it at that. Let's have some serialized field, private. Let's get the predicted rich body. So that way we can get the collision events. And let's also get the damage. Let's do private int damage. Let's do 20. 
Uh, okay, cool. And so now let's do it in the later wake. Uh, or actually, we can just do it on the on the enable on the sable. We just do rigid body dot on collision enter. Let's, do, let's just call it on hit. And let's just on disable unsubscribe as well. Like that. We unsubscribe and let's make the on hit method. And here, of course, we want to check if other dot try get components. And let's get the player health. So let's do out player health. And let's just check that if this hits anyone. Um, so I think it's fine that it's hitting ourselves as well. I'm actually just return here because we don't want to do anything otherwise. And let's also quickly in the player health, let's just have a look here. You can see we have the hit other player, which will take away the damage. But I think also let's just generally make a public void take damage and damage. And this should, of course, take the current state dot health minus equals to the damage that we get in here. And then we can obviously here with hit other player, we can just call that as well with that damage. That should work just fine. I'm going back to the projectiles here now. Let's call the player health to take damage. Let's send it the damage. And let's then also do the predicted. Uh, oh, sorry, prediction manager dot hierarchy dot delete. And what we want to delete is, well, this game object. And that should pretty much be it. So now on hit, we should take, we should deal the damage to whatever players hit, and we should destroy the object. This was, as I mentioned, this was essentially the, the, the despawning or the destroying. Whereas, you know, obviously the create was the instantiate. So now let's try this. Let's try and fire it. I completely forgot to add the script because I have two IQ. So let's add the projectile scripts. And there we go. Should be about it. Now let's test it again. Shoot it on him. We have a null reference. Of course, because I didn't... Ah, uh, buffoonery. I need to give it the predicted rigid body as well. There we go. Let's try once more. And there you go. And now you can see now we hit him and it actually destroys itself. Whoop, whoop. You can snipe him from range. Or as you can see here, we can also just hit the ones laying on the ground. That'll also work fine. Whoop. And there you go. As you can see, now we actually have shooting with damage and destroying bullets. Stuff like that. And mind you, if you want to add anything to this in terms of visuals, like let's say you want a trace behind it or particles or whatever, you'd add them to the visuals here. For example, we could easily... For example, we could easily go into effects and let's do trail. And let's just try and look at how the trail looks right now. It looks like this. I don't think that looks very good. So let me just quickly modify this. Let's go into art, materials, trail, and let's just feed it the material here. Yeah, particles on lid. Like that. So now when we drag it around, you see this. And now let me make the thickness of it go down to zero at the end of it. Let's have it start way smaller. Let's give it a time of 0 0.3. And now when we drag it around, you can see it looks something like this. I think that looks pretty good. Can make it even thinner. Let's just put it at zero, zero. Uh, and let's try and have a look at this. And you'll notice something. So let's go and just test that really quickly. So now as you can see, when I shoot, the trail works and that looks good. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, that actually completely works. One thing though, that you might, oh, what a snipe. Hold on, this is too satisfying. I'm having fun in this little game. There we go, he died. Easy win. Um, one thing is, if you are enabling pooling and so on, that it can you can see the trail possibly jumping around. For that, all, you, all you'd really want to do is just unparenting the graphics, and that should essentially do it for you. That way, you'll just avoid having weird uh, behavior, typically with particles and trails and stuff like that. But yeah, as you can see, this works very well. You might notice there could be a little delay on some things at times. It really has to do a lot with the ticks that we're playing at. Right now, we're obviously playing at 20 ticks. We can play at 40 ticks, and that'll generally uh, mitigate a lot of this stuff quite a lot. And you can obviously go even higher. You can go 60 ticks, or some games do, or whatnot. But in general, this should still work pretty well and, well, do the job. So yeah, I hope you like this little video, and I hope you like how easy it should hopefully be to do things. The fact to me that you can fully make prediction by simply just... For example, destroying things in a single line, taking damage is really just a single line. Uh, I really think all of this is very clean. I think the longest script we have right now is probably other, other than the movement. Well, I guess, yeah, the movement here is about 80 lines. Other than that, we have like 50 lines, we have 70 lines. It's all short, simple scripts, and it's very easy for them to interact with one another, which I think makes it quite clean, at least, to work with. So let me know what you think. Very interested in what people think about the prediction system. Let me also know in the comments what other videos you'd like to see. And other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.